We saw that for convergent graph sequences, graph filters converge asymptotically to graph length filters. That suggests the use of finite graph filters to approximate graph length filters. We now discuss the conditions under which graph filters can approximate graph length filters and how good that approximation is for different values of n. In the last few lectures, we saw that for convergent graph sequences, the eigenvalues of the graph converge to the eigenvalues of the graphome. Moreover, as the frequency response of both graph and graphone filters are polynomials instantiated on the eigenvalues of the graph or graphone, this implies that the frequency response of graph filters converge asymptotically to the frequency response of a graphone filter. As the number of nodes in the graph, n, grows, the graph filters become more and more similar to the graphone filter. That suggests that we can use graph filters as approximations for the graphone filter, not asymptotically, but for a graph with a finite number of nodes n. That's precisely what we discuss in this lecture. We present conditions under which graph filters can approximate graphone filters, and we also quantify how good that approximation is for different values of n. A trouble we face when approximating graphone filters with graph filters is the fact that the eigenvalues of a graphone accumulate around zero. That accumulation makes it hard to match graph eigenvalues to the corresponding graphone eigenvalues when lambda is small, which in turn makes it hard to discriminate between consecutive eigenvalues in that range. Thus, if we allow the filter to change rapidly around zero, the filter may modify the graph and graphone eigenvalues differently. To obtain good approximations of a graphone filter with a graph filter, we must then restrict our attention to filters that do not change much around lambda equal to zero. We start with low-pass Lipschitz filters. As graphone eigenvalues tend to zero as the index grows, low-pass filters must be zero for all eigenvalues below a certain threshold c, with the constant c determining the filter's band. The filter removes high-frequency components, that is, the eigenvalues of the graphone closer to zero. But low-frequency components are not affected. This is important because, on one hand, low-frequency components are easier to match with graph eigenvalues. On the other, as zero is the only point of accumulation for graphone eigenvalues, the number of eigenvalues in the passing band will be finite, allowing us to derive bounds on how close the approximation of a graphone filter by a graph filter will be. To derive those approximation bounds, we need to introduce a set of Lipschitz assumptions on the graphone, the filter, and the graphone signal. First, we require the graphone to be Lipschitz with Lipschitz constant L1. That is, for all pairs of arguments u1, v1, and u2, v2, it holds that the absolute value of the difference of the graphone evaluated at u1, v1, and of the graphone evaluated at u2, v2, is bounded by the Lipschitz constant L1 times the sum of the absolute value of the difference between U1 and U2 and the val absolute value of the difference between V2 and V1. We also required the filter's frequency response to be Lipschitz with constant L2. That is, for all eigenvalues lambda 1 and lambda 2, we have that the absolute value of the difference of the filter's response evaluated at lambda 2 and lambda 1 is bounded by the Lipschitz constant times the distance between the eigenvalues. We also required the filter's frequency response to be normalized in the sense that the absolute value of the frequency response at any lambda is at most one. Our third assumption is that the graphon signal X is Lipschitz with, with constant L3. As usual, that means that for all U1 and U2, the absolute value of the difference of the graphon signal at U1 and U2 is bounded by the Lipschitz constant L3 times the distance between the arguments U1 and U2. We will also need to introduce some definitions so that we can compare graph filters to graphone filters. These definitions require that we fix a bandwidth C to separate eigenvalues that are close to zero from those that are not close to zero. Associated to C, we define the C-band cardinality B and C. This is a count of the number of eigenvalues whose absolute value is larger than C. This is a number we know is finite. 
also associated with C, we define the C eigenvalue margin of the graph Gn. This margin is the smallest gap, smallest gap between the graph eigenvalue lambda ni and the graphon eigenvalue lambda j with different index. The graph eigenvalue has to be in the C-band, but the graphon eigenvalue can be anywhere. Typically, this gap is the difference between the graph eigenvalue that is immediately above C and the graphon eigenvalue that is immediately below C. We are now ready to state our first results. It refers to the approximation of a graphon filter by a graph filter with low-pass Lipschitz filters. Consider then a graphon filter Y and a graph filter YN instantiated from Y. With definitions D1 through D2, assumptions A1 through A3, and the additional requirement that the filter is low pass, that is, H of lambda is equal to zero for all eigenvalues with absolute value below the threshold C, the L2 norm of the difference between the graphon filter Y and the graph filter YN induced by lowercase yn is bounded by the square root of the Graphon's Lipschitz constant L1 times the sum of the filter's Lipschitz constant L2 and the ratio between pi times the number of eigenvalues in the passing band, B and C, and the C eigenvalue margin of the graph. And then times n to minus half times the L2 norm of the Graphon signal X to which we add another term that is comprised of the graphon signal's Lipschitz constant L3 divided by the square root of 3 and multiplied by n to minus half. We do not discuss the proof here, but this proof is available on the course website. In order to see how we can deal with the graphon eigenvalues accumulated around zero, we now turn our attention to high-pass filters. High-pass graphon filters are those that have no frequency response for all eigenvalues that have absolute value above a certain threshold C. That is, high-pass filters remove components associated to low graphon frequencies. Here, we also assume that the filters have low variability around zero. The low variability of the filter in high frequencies makes it easier to match graph eigenvalues to graphon eigenvalues around lambda equal to zero thus leading to approximating graph filters with tighter approximation bounds. We are now ready to state our next results concerning the approximation of graphon filters by graph filters for high-pass filters. Consider then a graphon filter Y and a graph filter YN instantiated from Y. With definitions D1 through D2, assumptions A1 through A3, and the additional requirement that the filter has low variability around zero and it is high pass, that is, h of lambda is equal to zero for all eigenvalues with absolute value above the threshold C. The L2 norm of the difference between the graphon filter Y and the graph filter YN induced by lowercase yn is bounded by the filter's Lipschitz constant L2 times the passing band threshold C times the L2 norm of the graphon signal X. We did not discuss the proof here, but the proof is available on the course website. With those two results in hand, we are ready to establish approximation bounds for more general filters. The class of filters that we consider here corresponds to those filters that exhibit low variability for those eigenvalues located below a certain threshold C. That is precisely the region where the eigenvalues of the graphon accumulate and where we may have trouble matching graph eigenvalues to the corresponding graphon eigenvalues. For those eigenvalues located above the threshold C, we require the filter to be Lipschitz, but the filter doesn't need to sacrifice variability in this region. The number of eigenvalues satisfying lambda greater than C is finite, and the eigenvalues do not accumulate in that region, making it easier to graph, match graphs and graphon eigenvalues. Now, as you may have suspected, the class of filters that we are discussing in this slide is nothing more than a composition of a low-pass filter and a high-pass one. That construction is key to obtain our final result for the approximation of graphon filters by graph filters that we present next. We now state our main result that establishes a bound for the approximation of a graphon filter by a graph filter. Consider then a graphon filter Y and a graph filter Yn instantiated from Y. 
With definitions D1 through D2, assumptions A1 through A3, and the additional requirement that the filter exhibits low variability for all lambda below a certain threshold C, the L2 norm of the difference between the graphon filter Y and the graph filter Yn induced by lowercase yn is bounded by the square root of the Graffon's Lipschitz constant L1 times the sum of the filter's Lipschitz constant L2 and the ratio between pi times the number of eigenvalues in the passing band B and C and the C eigenvalue margin of the graph. And then times n to the minus half times the L2 norm of the Graffon signal X, to which we add another term that is comprised of the Graffon signal's Lipschitz constant L3 divided by the square root of 3 and multiplied by n to the minus half. And another term consisting of the filter's Lipschitz constant L2 times the passing band threshold C times the L2 norm of the Graffon signal X. As we discussed a few minutes ago, a filter with variable band can be seen as the sum of a low-pass L2 Lipschitz filter with H1 of lambda equal to 0 for all lambda less than C, and a high-pass filter exhibiting low variability for high-frequency components, that is, for all lambda less than C, and a no-frequency response for all eigenvalues outside of that range. As our resulting filter is the sum of those two filters, we can use the triangle inequality to compute the L2 norm of the difference between the graphon filter Y and the graph filter approximation Yn. That is equal to the norm of the difference between the output of the graphon filter for a graphon and the output of the induced graph filter. Now, as the induced filter H is the sum of two filters H1 and H2, we can use the triangle inequality to break down that term between the norm of the difference between the output of the graphon filter and the induced graph filter for the low pass filter H1, and the norm of the difference between the output of the graphon filter and the induced graph filter for the high pass Lipschitz filter H2. But we already know how to bound that first term on the right hand side. That is the approximation bound we have obtained for low pass Lipschitz filters. Similarly, we know that the second term on the right-hand side can be bounded by the approximation bound we obtained for high-pass Lipschitz filters. Adding up the two bounds, we then prove our approximation theorem for Lipschitz filters with variable band. According to the theorem, the difference between the Graffon filter Y and the graph filter approximation Yn is upper bounded with the approximation bound depending on the filter transferability constant given by the square root of the Graffon's Lipschitz constant L1 times the sum of the filter's Lipschitz constant A2 plus the ratio between the filter's parameters B and C and delta and C, and on the difference between the Graffon signal X and the Graffon signal Xn induced by the graph signal lowercase xn. The bound also depends on the Graffon via the Graffon Lipschitz constant L1. We could make the bound tighter by decreasing the value of L1. But L1 also affects the variability of the Graffon. Note that as the bound decreases asymptotically with n, as expected, we know that graph filters converge asymptotically to Graffon filters. Moreover, as n grows, the transferability constant dominates the bound. That implies that the quality of the approximation, or how close we can make the Graffon in the approximating graph filter, depends strongly on the transferability constant. According to the theorem, the approximation bound is dominated by the transferability constant as n grows. The transferability constant is, in turn, dependent on the filter parameters, the filter's Lipschitz constant L2, the number of eigenvalues in the passing band B and C, and the C eigenvalue margin of the graph Gn. Both the filter's Lipschitz constant L2 and the filter's passing band, which corresponds to the interval from C to 1, determine the variability of the filter's spectral response. The Lipschitz constant affects the sharpness of the filter. By increasing it, we can make it the filter sharper and thus more disc discriminative. But that in turn makes the transferability bound less tight. The filter's discriminability also depends on the filter's passing band. But the number of eigenvalues in the passing band has to be limited. We must have nc less than the square root of n. This restriction on the number of eigenvalues in the passing band is necessary to assure 
that the eigenvalues of the graph converge asymptotically to those of the graph form. When that condition is satisfied, the C eigenvalue margin of the graph delta C is non-null and converges to the minimum eigengap of the graph form for any eigenvalue in the passing band, which ensures convergence of the eigenvalues, thus making the approximation tighter. From our discussion on bound of the approximation of a graph form filter by a graph filter, we identify a fundamental issue. Good approximation bounds are, sent, are counter to the filter's discriminability. To obtain tight approximation bounds, we need filters that do not change by much around zero. But in that case, the filter is unable to discriminate components associated to eigenvalues close to zero. For larger graphs, though, that is less of an issue. Good approximation of a graph form filter by a graph filter requires the number of eigenvalues in the passing band, P and C, to be less than the square root of n. Thus, as n grows larger, we can afford a larger number of eigenvalues, B and C, in the passing band. That ends up improving discriminability of the filter without penalizing the filter's approximation bound.